Hello everyone. I am Professor Anishwara and I welcome you all in this our next video lecture. In today's video lecture, we will study about uh, short circuit characteristic of three phase induction motor. Short circuit characteristic of three phase induction motor consists of short circuit current which is available during blocked rotor condition. When rotor is blocked and when we applied a reduced voltage, we achieve short circuit current which is restricted by two parameter. One parameter is winding resistance and second parameter that is leakage reactance. So to achieve short circuit current, we have to calculate or we have to estimate both the parameters. We start with uh, winding resistance, St uh, stator resistance. In case of three phase induction motor, whether it is a wound type or squirrel cage type, stator resistance remain common because stator construction is common. Stator resistance per phase that is given by rho multiplied by L that is the length of the main turn divided by cross sectional area and multiplied by Ts that is the stator turns. We give notations LMTS suffix s that is for stator so length of mean turn of stator winding as that is area of cross section of conductor stator conductor rho that is the resistivity of the conductor that depends on the material we use and normally we use copper and ts that is number of stator per phase So, rotor resistance of wound rotor, as I said, stator resistance remain common. So, now rotor resistance, first we see how to calculate rotor resistance for wound rotor. Rotor resistance per phase. So, again it is given by similar equation, suffix R is for rotor, so it is a rho multiplied by length divided by cross-sectional area and multiplied by total number of the rotor turns per phase. We can give the notations that is L MTR that is length of the mean turn of rotor winding, area of cross-section of rotor conductor in millimeter square AR rho that is the resistivity of the conductor and tr that is number of rotor turns per phase. In case of a wound rotor type of induction motor, we have winding and resistance of wound rotor can be referred to the stator side. So we can have a total resistance referred to the stator. First we see the rotor resistance per phase referred to the stator. So we have equation and we know that how to convert rotor resistance or how we can refer our rotor resistance to the stator side. So by using turns ratio, stator to rotor turns ratio, we can have referred value of resistance to the stator side. Now in case of uh, rotor resistance for squirrel cage type of rotor. In case of squirrel cage type of rotor, we know that in squirrel cage rotor we have bars, rotor bars and end rings. So resistance of each bar, it can be given by equation 
that is rho multiplied by length and divided by cross section area. Rho is the resistivity of the bar material. LB, B suffix is for bar. So length of each bar and AB that is area of each bar. So resistance of individual bar can be achieved by this equation. So total copper loss in bar we have calculated the resistance of each individual bar but now we will calculate total copper loss that is I square R losses. So that is uh, exactly equal to the IB square multiplied by RB. IB square, IB is a bar current and RB that is a bar resistance multiplied by number of rotor slots. We know that total number of bars are exactly equal to the total number of rotor slots. So with this equation, we'll able to get total copper loss in the bar and if we substitute value of rotor resistance of bar then we get SR multiplied by IB square multiplied by rho multiplied by LB divided by cross sectional area so total copper loss in the bar is achieved now same way resistance of each end ring we know that we have two end rings. So resistance of each end ring that is again rho multiplied by pi multiplied by dE and divided by area. So rho is the resistivity of the material of end ring. dE that is the mean diameter of each ring in meter. E suffix we use for end ring. Area of each ring in millimeter square so with this equation total copper loss in both the end rings again we have i square r losses so ie that is end ring current i square multiplied by re and we have two end rings so it is multiplied by two if we substitute value of re that is a end ring resistance then we get this equation two multiplied by ie square multiplied by rho multiplied by pi multiplied by de and divide by ae so total copper loss in rotor we have individually calculated copper loss total copper loss of the bar and we have calculated total copper loss in the end ring so now we have total copper loss in the rotor. So total copper loss in the rotor. We have individual copper loss in the rotor bars as well as uh, in end ring. So now we have total copper loss that is uh, addition of both the losses, both the copper losses. So as per this equation we have total copper loss in the uh, rotor. Now if we substitute uh, entering current, we have previously derived this equation and we know that IE that is uh, SR that is number of rotor slots multiplied by IB and divided by pi P. P is number of poles. So instead of IE, if we substitute this value, then we get this equation. Now from this equation if we rearrange then we have the equation of total copper loss in the rotor like this that is SR IB square rho LB divided by AB plus rho 2 by pi SR square IB square P square multiplied by DE divided by AE. Now if we take certain amounts as a common then we have total copper loss in the rotor is like this equation. We have 
taken SR square, IB square and rho common from both the quantities. In case of copper loss, we know that it is I square R losses. So, IB square multiplied by rotor, rotor resistance. So, the remaining parameters with IB square, we have total rotor resistance and therefore, rotor resistance is equal to this equation that is SR square rho multiplied by LB divided by SR AB plus 2 by pi multiplied by 1 by P square and multiplied by DE divided by AE. So, with this equation, we are able to achieve total resistance. So, after obtaining total rotor resistance of square cage induction motor, now we further proceed to leakage reactance. Starting, we have discussed that uh, short circuit current depends or restricted by two parameters that is the uh, winding resistance as well as the leakage reactance. So, re leakage reactance is uh, one of the very important parameter. Uh, maximum output, starting torque, maximum torque, all important performance parameters of the induction motor depends on leakage reactance. And uh, in case of three phase induction motor, we know that uh, total flux generated by the stator that is uh, some of the flux or most of the flux interlink with stator as well as rotor and that is known as a useful flux. But some of the flux known as a leakage flux, they interlink with either stator or rotor but not with the stator and rotor. So this is known as a leakage flux and a leakage flux is uh, converted as leakage reactance. So, we have because of leakage flux, we have different uh, leakage flux that is known as a slot leakage flux, we have overhang leakage flux, we have zigzag leakage flux and we have differential or harmonic leakage flux. Now, in case of a three phase induction motor, we cannot completely eliminate the leakage flux because of complex leakage flux path. So, we will have to during designing, we have to calculate appropriately this leakage fluxes and from this leakage flux, we can have a leakage reactance. So, we start with a slot leakage reactance. This is one of the slot and the winding is shown and we have leakage flux. So, stator slot leakage reactance can be given by this equation. S that is for slot. So, this is a leakage reactance for stator slot. So, it is given by 8 pi F. F is frequency. T S square that is uh, tons of stator tons per phase, L that is stator core length and multiplied by lambda SS divided by P and QS where lambda SS that is specific permeance of stator slot and QS that is number of stat uh, stator slots per pole per phase. So, with this equation, we will able to achieve stator slot leakage reactance. And same way, with the similar equation, we have rotor slot leakage reactance. So, rotor slot leakage reactance referred to stator site. So, X dash, dash we use when we refer to the uh, either stator site or rotor site. SR, that is slot and rotor. Almost similar equation 8 pi f T square L 
multiplied by lambda s r lambda dash s r divided by p that is number of pole and q s so lambda dash s r that is equivalent rotor slot permeance referred to the stator so next is the overhang leakage reactance we have in our figure we have one coil and we have active length that is l and we have some of the leakage fluxes which is known as overhang leakage flux so overhang leakage flux leakage reactance can be given by xo again almost a similar equation 8 pi f t square lo multiplied by lambda o divided by p and qs so next is a zigzag leakage reactance as shown in the figure we have stator we have rotor and we have zigzag leakage flux so zigzag leakage reactance can be given by this equation x that is uh, for reactance and z suffix z is for zigzag leakage reactance so that is pi by 6 multiplied by xm divided by ms square multiplied by 1 upon qs square plus 1 upon qr square where qs that is the number of stator slots per pole per phase and qr that is number of rotor slots per pole per phase then we have xm that is magnetizing reactance that is es divided by im that is magnetizing current and ms that is number of phase on the uh, stator side so with this equation we have zigzag type of leakage reactance our next is a differential leakage reactance that is also sometimes known as a harmonic leakage reactance in case of three phase induction motor it is a very negligibly small leakage reactance so xh h is for harmonic leakage reactance that is xm multiplied by khs plus khr where khs that is constant for stator and khr that is constant for rotor so now we have total leakage reactance so that is addition of all the individual leakage reactance so xs that is a uh, xss that is stator slot leakage reactance xsr that is a uh, slot a uh, rotor slot leakage reactance referred to the stator side xo that is overhang leakage reactors xz that is zigzag leakage reactors and xh that is differential or harmonic leakage reactors so with this equation we have total leakage reactors and we have total impedance that is uh, zs that is xs square plus rs square and the short circuit current that is uh, isc that is es divided by total impedance that is zs and we have short circuit power factor that is rs divided by total. so with this both parameter we are able to achieve short circuit current and power factor during short circuit condition so short circuit current that is a uh, stator voltage divided by total impedance and the power factor that is a uh, stator resistance divided by impedance so we are able to achieve short circuit characteristic with these two parameters thank you for watching my video keep watching my video thank you very much Thanks a lot.